a good volume for uh, for us here. Can you hear us okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Anybody? Test one, two. Come on, A-Rod. Oh, T-Dot's watching, too. A little low? Okay. How about now, test? Test one, two. Test one, two. Better? Okay, good. Let me check one more thing. Holy shit. That's right. <laughs> well, if you can hear it, okay. Is that like fuzzy or anything, or is the mic's not cracking? You're good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Alright. So. Let's go ahead and start Spiral Series Highlight Reel Episode 2, featuring um, Brainpipe Dana. Also known as Seth Killian. <laughs> <laughs> also known as Seth Killian. Um, I often get. So for anybody who's unfamiliar with the premise of the show, it is to recap um, what happened in previous tournament events in the Arizona fighting game community, and also to uh, cover various topics uh, for our community, uh, such as players and uh, events and um, other kind of cool things. So with that, uh, today at least, we have a, a pretty general plan for you here. Um, so we'll be talking about our, our co-host here, Dana. Uh, we'll also be going over Rambat News um, and then some other future events coming up in the following weeks, um, as well as some match analysis for a Marvel uh, match, and uh, then a player spotlight and a special segment on Daigo. So uh, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Go back to this here. So this is this is Dana Brainpipe. Hello. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I'm a Gemini. <laughs> uh, I play Deadly in Street Fighter Four. Uh, I play Magneto, Modok, Du, and Marvel 3. I've been in the scene since, I guess, was it 09, I guess? I think 09. I started playing uh, Street Fighter 4 on PC, like, right when it came out on PC, and, because uh, I didn't have an Xbox or any consoles at the time, and then I spent about, like, seven or so months playing just online, and then realized I really, really wanted to, to start meeting people that like these games to realize how much I enjoyed them. I started coming out and I met you and like uh, everybody at Dorian's place uh, when he was hosting at that point. Like right just around the time, a couple, like maybe about two months before Super came out. And then I've pretty much been in this ever since. Um, and uh, I do... Oops. Sorry. Yeah, telephone. Oh, wow. I want to retweet it. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, I really enjoy these games. I really enjoy the philosophy behind these games. I think you can actually learn a lot about yourself playing fighting games. Like I think there's a, like I really am a big fan of philosophy, and I think uh, the sort of competition that these games foster really uh, go hand in hand with that. So that's usually where I come from with these these games. Very cool. Um, sorry, one sec. Trying to turn the volume all the way down. There we go. 
Okay. Um, let's see. So you were at the Ramda yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and uh, let's go a little bit through what happened. Uh, cut to that. Yeah, all right. Check that out. Okay. So. Um, for those who aren't familiar, our Ramvat season, uh, it stands for Ranking, Battle Ranking Battles, which is a tournament series of uh, five tournaments, and we have an overall season. So whoever wins the most tournaments or places the highest uh, in each tournament uh, wins the whole season and gets a prize and stuff. So we run three games, uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition 2012. Uh, so we're going to go through the results here. Um, so first, the first game we ran was Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Um, the results are pretty standard from last week. Uh, Arcade in a Box said 3S took the uh, took the whole tournament with his Akuma Mina team. Mm -hmm. um, he's been pretty dominant this entire season. Yeah, he really loves the game and uh, really seems to to be dominating it for quite a while now. Yep, uh, he. Uh, Played very well at Evo too. He beat, I think he, he beat Mago. He did beat Mago. I do remember that. Yeah. And um, who did he lose to? Was it MOV or was it MOV and Wong? And Justin Wong. Yeah. yeah. So you know, pretty good people to lose to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he took some people out at Evo for sure. Uh, uh <laughs> definitely. Uh, like he's just he's pretty nuts in this game. So then, uh, in addition to. Said 3S, we also have Saber, who's a regular, uh, Rockus. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick Dog is actually, uh, he hasn't really come out very much for Cross Tekken, so it was good to see him play so high. He's been too on that magic train. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Rockman and Swoops and Isaac, all pretty consistent. Well, more so Rockman and Swoops. They've been at every round that as well. Mm -hmm. So on the right there, we have the season standings. You have uh, uh, Abe, Said 3S in the lead. Uh, very convincingly, uh, you get seven points for getting first place, and so we've only had three Ram Vats, and he's gotten first each time. Yeah. Uh, Saber and Rock, uh, pretty close. Uh, they they've been swapping a lot. I know Rock beat uh, Saber last uh, Ram Vat. Um, we have a double Jeopardy rule too, which we will talk about uh, mm -hmm. later on. Yeah, which um, definitely came into play. But I'm definitely, <laughs> yeah, I'm considering renaming the double Jeopardy rule, uh, the Saber and Rock rule, because they always end up having to reenact that. <laughs> All right, uh, so then uh, moving on, our next game was uh, was Street Fighter IV. Um, mm -hmm. Street Fighter IV has been probably one of the more uh, of dynamic games in this, this season because uh, we've had varying amounts of entrants. Uh, I know the first round that we had like 40 entrants. Yeah, was, that was really, really big for us. Lot, lots of new faces. Um, and... Uh, Admittedly, during the season, we've kind of dropped in attendance, but a lot of those new faces have stuck around. There is that thing. I think a lot of new people, you know, they come out, and then when they run into some of the real hard-hitting players, it can be a bit of a buzzkill yeah. for a good amount of them. Definitely, and that's something that everyone has to come to terms with when playing competitive games, is that uh, you're going to lose. Yeah, um, and some people really they don't like that. Yeah. Uh, but so, yeah. Uh, so an example of a heavy, a heavy hitter that uh, people will run into in a bracket is a uh, crazy ex Ernest. He was our co-host the last tournament, uh, last uh, episode. Yeah, Ernest's been playing well lately. Yeah, he's been that Cammy. Yeah, he, he plays Cammy. Um, and not even to say like ooh Cammy bullshit. Like he's been playing Cammy pretty viciously. Yep. So you know Ernest is a generally good type of tier four. Yeah. <laughs> like, he tries hard to like do the properly. Uh, mean things with the unfair <laughs> characters. Mean things. Fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. there's those tier fours that, you know, they just ride on on the characters, and there's tier fours who, who realize just how screwed up the characters really get when you when you investigate them a little bit. Uh -huh. And Ernest definitely likes to investigate. You know, he certainly I've seen him switch from character to character based on how good he thinks they are, but but then he you know he tries hard to. To find what's really fucked up. <laughs> Am I allowed to curse? Yeah, you're okay. allowed to curse. Right. Uh, so, yeah, like uh, Ernest has been, or Crazy EX has, uh, he's gotten second at the past two Ram Bats. And so if you look at his overall point total, it's not as commanding of a lead as Abe's is. Uh, but he's gotten second and the, and now his first uh, first place victory with the seven points. Yeah. Uh, so second place, you have Arcade in the Box Isaac, who 
actually won the first Rand at, uh, but he didn't even show up to the second one. And so, like, he's kind of, uh, he's in an awkward position in the brackets, or in, in, in the season standings, because he uh, just, he, he's, even though he's won a Rand at, and he's gotten second in another Rand at, he's still tied with a lot of people who have gotten third yeah. or fourth, so... He's uh, kind of got some in some hot water right now if he wants to make it into the, the next uh, – or if he wants to win the season, basically. Mm. So in third place, we have this uh, newer newer player called Thunder God. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. He's a Sakura guy. player. Uh, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's, uh, uh, he's from Yuma. Yeah, he's one of the Yuma guys. Um, I played him – this was the first time I didn't play him at the Rampads. I beat him the first time he came out, and then he beat me pretty bad the time after. And yeah, we didn't get to play this time, but uh, I've been seeing him get pretty high every uh, every round bat so far with that Sakura. Yeah, so. I think as far as I know, this is the first uh, real season I've ever seen him play in. He didn't really play in the has I saw or... him a while ago. I do remember playing him, I think, at a MujiCon. Fair enough. And I, and I remember talking with him a bit after playing in, in that as well. Um, and yeah, that was the. I think that's. I think maybe he came out at some point before that. But that's the first time I really remember seeing him. Maybe maybe back in July. Right, right. He's a he, because he's a Yuma player, or he was a Yuma player. Now he lives in Tucson. Um, oh, he lives in Tucson now. Mm -hmm. Oh, no wonder he's coming up more. Yeah. So Yuma in general. That's just, a far drive. Yuma is very very far from here, and so like there's a core group of five or six players I think yeah. that uh, that play. In I Yuma. wouldn't make that drive. Yeah. <laughs> so they come from very very. Uh, very, very rare occasions, like, they came, they came to mashup, and they come to the Muji Connors, and they came for bar fights, but for these regular weekly kind of things. Yeah, that's why you see. That's, that's not very feasible for them. Yeah, and, and that's, I don't fault them for that. It's a long drive. I mean, Tucson's hard enough. Yeah. For, for those guys. Yeah, it's hard enough for Phoenix to go down to Tucson sometimes, yeah. too. <laughs> uh, so then uh, Rick got fourth again in, in four. I, that's a little surprising. <laughs> uh, did, he, did he get fourth again? Previously? No, he got fourth in cross tech. Oh, oh four, I and he hasn't four. he hasn't been in any of the other. Yeah, bands. Rick beat me this, this time. Of course, I also maybe made the horrible error. <laughs> think Dalson, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Rick 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 beat Isaac. Uh, Rick beat Isaac. Rick beat Isaac. Isaac beat him later though, in the, when they <laughs> played again in losers bracket. But yeah, that was quite the upset. That was pretty early in the tournament as well. That's funny. Like. Uh, I think I was playing when it was going on, but I remember hearing a lot of people yelling stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Rick beat Isaac. Was that on stream? I think it was. Oh, dang. Okay, so <laughs> check, the, check the YouTube archives in a, in a bit here. I'll announce the, uh, the play. And I think he was using Blanca for it. I can see that. I think. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so rounding out the rest of top eight here, uh, you actually got fifth, which is pretty I, solid. I didn't think I got that high. This, this uh, I thought I didn't even make top eight. Yesterday. You did. You Why am I playing well <laughs> in four? <laughs> I think I think a lot of just newer players are coming up, and Maybe. like I said earlier, four is one of the more dynamic games where it's like you have so many people who play it, but like whether or not they're going to actually play. I'm they're surprised I got higher than Mike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's, that's rare. Another, another thing I wanted to point out that's is Luminaire, really who's, Luminaire, who has been he's gotten third in the past two Rand bats, so he's placed very high each time. Um, you can tell in the season standings, he's up there. Like he has a chance to win the season if he plays properly the next. Oh yeah, last he, could, he could probably do it. Uh, but today or yesterday was a kind of a sad underperformance for him. Um, so then uh, our last tournament of the day was uh, was Marvel versus Capcom three. Um, mm -hmm. For the most part, our standings have been pretty solidified, uh, at least for the top three. Um, Angelic has won every single Rambat, similar to the, the dominance mm -hmm. that Abe shows across Tekken. Um, yeah, Mondo's really, you know, now that he's sponsored, he really wants to play even more seriously, so he's been been really trying to, to stay on, on his game. Yep. Because uh, I know he's traveling again pretty soon to some uh, some other tournaments. Right. Uh, I think he's going to that Mexico tournament this week. Uh, I don't know what he's doing after that. Pro oh, I know what you're doing, doing that. <laughs> the broken tooth thing. <laughs> but yeah um so and then in addition to that there's the two players that are constantly vying for second and third place and kind of trading a lot uh fizzy cups and lorenzo or tubazo uh they have just been switching back and forth from second and third place uh, mm -hmm. this season and so 
They're very close in the season standings. Uh, never going pro, showing up, uh, making a pretty solid top eight showing this time around. Yeah. Um, he's also, he's got, he has some consistency issues. Um, sometimes he, he shows up and he doesn't make top eight. Sometimes he dominates everybody and wins the whole thing. Yeah, he really can can go either way sometimes. I think his style of play is very polarizing. He plays, like, he's known as one of our safer players, but because of playing keep away, if you make one mistake, you get, yeah. you get killed. So that's that's good on him for taking undertaking that task. He's been playing a lot of strider though as well last, so that helps round him out a bit. True. <laughs> True. I forgot about that. Uh, uh, which, you know, previously he wasn't really doing as much. But... Uh, not so in Ninja Nom. Uh, doing pretty well in fifth place there. Uh, they've been leveling up quite a bit. They haven't really... They, yeah. they really weren't uh, solid showings in previous Man Bat seasons or previous tournaments in general in our scene. And so it's good to see them pop up and do work. Ninja Nom actually in fourth place for the whole season there. Yeah, well, Nom, I, I think, for a long time, has always had a very strong mentality for these games. Mm -hmm. Not so I'm a little more impressed with in terms of like how far he's come. Because, mm -hmm. you know, he came as a guy that had no idea what he was doing a few years back. And now he's really starting to... Uh, to, to figure out the mentality behind his games, which, yeah. which is interesting to see. It's he's, always cool. He's definitely coming into his own. Yeah, like that that spark when they start just thinking more. Yeah, guess, and it's really funny cool. watching him switch to Hagar. Because <laughs> you'd almost think, like, you know, he started playing uh, Dante, Virgil, Strider usually, yeah. and stuff like that, like Dante, Virgil, Hawkeye, I think he was doing for a while. And, you know, like he was really trying to play super top tier, and then he seems to really have... Uh, like figure out a play style that he likes more with Hagar, mm -hmm. and I think that's more important than just picking top tier in the end. Sure, it's uh, this is actually something I might want to talk about a little later. But I think there's a concept. You know, Sanford Kelly would say like, pick a top tier. I say pick a capable tier <laughs> that falls into what feels right. Right. But uh, they have to be capable. <laughs> uh, Can't be so Iron Fist tier. <laughs> Uh, so then rounding out our top eight are our two, two Tucson representatives, uh, White Tower Akbar, newly sponsored by LXG, and Crazy EX. Uh, Akbar was the player spotlight uh, last episode, and Crazy EX was the co-host of last episode. Mm -hmm. So then season standings, pretty straightforward there. Um, again, our, our standings are pretty solidified as far as Angelic is concerned. Uh, underneath it, there's a lot of moving and shaking, and hopefully we'll see some crazy stuff happen in the coming season. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of room for people to shift about. Alrighty. So then moving on, uh, that's the end of our Rambat pr um, results for this particular uh, episode. So real quick, um, upcoming uh, events, our Rambat season is still going. We have two more, um, and it will be the next one will be on the 19th, I believe. Uh, so two weeks from yesterday, so the 19th. Uh, so come around for that one, and then we have another one on November 2nd. Um, and then uh, uh, this coming Saturday, though, we actually have uh, a very special event. Mm -hmm. um, this was announced, was it two or three days ago? Yeah, or, yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, not long ago. So this is a, the event is called The Danger Room. Um, it's uh, being thrown by Team Broken Tier, uh, Kubi, who uh, is allowing uh he's flying about a bunch of players uh to his house to do basically a three-day boot camp training session that will be streamed the whole time i almost kind of liken it to like a reality show like kind of like yeah. cross assault with all the, without all the bs yeah so that's sexual harassment <laughs> well, that was sexual harassment although there still could be room for that <laughs> things, things are not set in stone um, hopefully not i guess <laughs> but so the um Man, that threw, that totally threw me. <laughs> uh, so they, uh, yeah, they'll be streaming for three days straight. Um, uh, players like Yipes, uh, Marlon Pie, and uh, Viscont, Clockwork, Angelic, uh, like they'll they'll all be there training. Um, and uh, uh, fortunate for our Arizona community, um, Kugi has graciously allowed us to have eight. Arizona players show up for one day to train with these high-level players. Yeah, which is really a, an awesome, awesome deal. Uh, and Kugi once again proving that he's a super rad guy and good to have in this state. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so, um, 
We are uh, Spotify is one of the sponsors for the event. In addition to big names like Avery Media and Mad Cats, uh, they'll be doing giveaways throughout the uh, yeah, throughout the event, and you'll see some really high level play. Um, All you got to do in your local scene is have a generous benefactor. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's a nice, it's a convenient thing. We've definitely gone through our share of generous benefactors. <laughs> um, so then. Uh, for, Sp uh, for Spiral Series, at least, the eight-man qualifier will be taking place this coming uh, week, or weekend, actually, on Saturday the, shoot, the 12th. Um, like I said earlier, we have eight spots for the Broken to Your House uh, event, the Danger Room event, where you will get to play people like Yipes and Angelic and uh, Viscon and Clockwork. Um, and so that's going to be a huge opportunity for our scene. And so if you think you have what it takes to uh, qualify and uh, get a chance to play those guys, please come to our qualifier on, um, I already forgot what date it was, the 12th? Yeah, the 12th. And uh, it'll be at UAT, uh, University of Events and Technology on I-10 and Baseline. Um, and it'll be a round robin. So we're, it's going to be a very, very long event. You'll, you'll be playing lots of matches because we really want to make sure that we have our top eight Arizona players uh, for Marvel coming and uh, representing us. Mm -hmm. um, I think as far as Capcom events go, that's pretty much all that's happening in our scene in Arizona. I think uh, I think there's some other ones, but I don't have definite dates yet. I know there's a King of Fighters tournament today at the Gaming Zone. I don't know if it's still going, but if you're in the King of Fighters, uh, turn the stream off and go go hang out with them. This will be on YouTube later. <laughs> uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and keep going with uh, our schedule here. Uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, go through some match analysis. Uh, let me go ahead and go back to this agenda so that way you all know what's going on. So we have match analysis. Uh, Alright, so why don't you go ahead and give me a little bit of uh, background on these two players while I get set up here. Alright, uh, Tubizo is our resident firebrand who plays a rather unorthodox, and personally I still kind of think bad team. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Firebrand Hulk Arthur, but you know he's a he's a real character specialist. He really loves his characters that he plays. So he tries really hard to uh, make them work. And it's not a it's not a re truly bad team, but it's not it doesn't have the the synergy that uh, a lot of the really high tier teams would like to have. But it's got it's got some good tricks. It's got some good potential. And uh, Fizzy Cups Diego. Uh, has recently switched to B's team. He's basically Frank West has been his main uh, forever, and he's played a number of teams around him, usually centering with uh, Frank and Dormammu. But he's kind of it's funny how he kind of went from Spencer Frank Dormammu to Dante Frank Dormammu to just Spencer Frank Dante. <laughs> just took the point characters and shoved them around, made a, made a Frank sandwich with them. A <laughs> Frank sandwich. Uh, but both of these guys have been really strong players in our scene for quite a while. Uh, definitely always in the running for, for placing well in our tournaments. And good guys, too. So that's always nice. Good people hang around. Very cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and cut to the match analysis here. So uh, the, up here, these labels are wrong, but they'll be used fixed momentarily. Um, I actually did not catch this match. I wasn't present at the Rambat. Yeah, um, you had to be elsewhere. So if you see any moments like you want to rewind or stop, you can totally do that. And uh, I think I was commentating on this matchup, so I'm pretty sure I watched all of it. There but I'm go. already hazing on some of it since yesterday. Actually, but, before we before we go too much into Oh, yeah, it, the double jeopardy rule. Exactly. Yeah. So we... Uh, actually, let's go ahead and cut back to this. So... <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so the, basically, the way uh, our, our tournaments are run is we have a double jeopardy rule, where if you are knocked into the losers bracket by uh, by somebody, uh, you have to when you meet each other back in the losers bracket, um, the winner of the previous game has kind of an advantage because they beat you the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, what we do is we take the scores from the previous round uh, from the previous match and all on Starcraft. Yeah, yeah, like StarCraft, and uh, take those and set those as the new uh, the new score for the second match, and it turns into a first and six. So basically, I believe 
the first match that they played that we're not showing here. Mm -hmm. uh, Busy Cups beat uh, Tufuzo 3-0. Yeah, in the, the the when they first fought in winners, it was uh, it was 3-0 Busy Cups. But I didn't get to catch that matchup, but I, I was aware of that so, going in. So the thing about that then is um, the next round is going to like. Basically, we take the score from the previous round, which is 3-0. So Fizzy Cups has three, and then Lorenzo uh, Tubazo has zero, and it's going to be a first to six then. So mm -hmm. basically, Tubazo has to win six games to take the entire set and beat uh, beat Fizzy Cups, whereas Fizzy Cups only has to win three. Yeah, so it becomes a pretty high pressure situation for for Lorenzo yes. Tubazo. Okay, so we'll go ahead and cut back to that here. So I'm very curious about how Spencer does against Firebrand here. Well, something really interesting that happens quite often is you're going to see Diego drop his combos against Firebrand almost every time, uh, with specifically with Spencer. Is so there a particular reason for that? I don't exactly know. It must be something about his small hitbox. There must be a slightly different timing. I'm certain Spencer can do that combo against him, but Diego seemed to... Uh, uh, not find the timing, and it really cost him quite a bit at times. Um, but you know, like right away, Lorenzo starts doing doing some real work. Um, Diego also starts to get really frivolous with some of his assist calls as the match goes on, and that starts costing him. But we'll get to that. Um, it's funny, like seeing his. Like there we go, <laughs> and then this match is over right there. This match just ends. <laughs> So right at the beginning, I was like, man, he's got six games to go. This is going to be really hard. And then, you know, how many seconds was it? Yeah, match? right. Like 20. Oh, shoot. Um, so, like, Lorenzo started off really hungry because uh, he had a huge mountain climb. So this is actually the same thing. I just accidentally rewound it yeah. unnecessarily. There's, like, a jump back 15 seconds thing. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Spoilers. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> let's see. I wanted them to get like an instant replay effect, so yeah. I, think I actually can do that. Uh, I guess there's no. Okay, yeah, yeah but basically. There was, <laughs> like, Diego literally just challenging the Hulk in ways that he really should know not to. I mean, why you would ever try to box jump over Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just not the not the greatest idea. I mean, I mean, I guess maybe you have to. I don't know Dante that well, but I would usually say I try to zone him out with Dante more than. I actually really want to go back and take a look at that real quick. Um, the way the way uh, crouching jabs work in this game is that it's very they can cancel into one another a lot, but mm -hmm. then. Uh, you can turn frame traps into it. Uh, so it turns into a game of like how big of a window you actually want to leave that person. Yeah. Because if you, get, if you leave the window too large, they can... Then they'll jab you out of you they, jab. Exactly. So, yeah. And then if you if you leave it too small, though, they might not actually... Push anything. Yeah, or if, push even it. if they do push it, it won't come out. Exactly. So against Spencer in particular, who has like a one of the fastest normals in the game with the armor piercer, mm -hmm. and he has a bionic arm. Uh, yep. Look at how Lorenzo spaces his frame traps. Rather than just do a space, he actually does a dash there. Mm -hmm. um, so he does jab, dash, jab, dash, jab, and then the final, final one hits. And then he goes into his little reset situation here. Yeah. And Diego throws out a panic arm. I remember that X Fact I did not agree with it. Yeah. Like he just he, he really should have just taken the mix up at that point or something. I definitely think that he could have Yeah, like Although you know what, maybe that's not true because he does ultimately just want to level Frank up, uh -huh. so keeping his point alive is probably really important. But I do think that was a bit of a panic X Factor. I do remember having a talk with him about it, and I told him to be more willing to burn X Factor liberally, because his team does not rely on X Factor. No, yeah, it relies on Frank. Yep. And even then, it doesn't entirely rely on Frank, because Spencer, Dante, can do a lot of damage. So I'd like to rewind this here, too, because if you'll notice how... Oh, shoot. Man, this is not as clean as I hoped. Um, if you'll notice how, right here, okay, so first first thought was Spencer is hurt. We need to get him out as soon as possible. I don't want any meters, so I'm going to have to go for a raw tag, right? Yeah. So then um, what what was weird was 
Fizzy Cups tagged in Frank Frank West instead. So he tagged in this anchor, and Spencer went to into the anchor position. Yeah. So you'll notice here that it's now Frank with Dante assists in the back. Uh, Spencer's pretty much in, in, uh, in all right now. Mm -hmm. But the tricky thing is this this order. I'm gonna totally do this right now. Yeah, <laughs> the best. This order in particular is is meant for a reason because as soon as that's done, oh shoot, <laughs> See, we can't get it up. As soon as that's done, he tags in Dante, and so what he's doing now is he's shifting his resources around because he he still wants that plan that you yeah, have, where yeah. he wants to be able to level up Frank. So he has Dante on point with Frank West in the back, so that way he can uh, DHC and get level five Frank. Very yeah, easy. Yeah. He's basically. Yeah, he's taking all the risky steps necessary to continue his plan. Yeah, which is smart. Yep. Although, so who are risky. But. <laughs> the lucky thing is that Lorenzo really doesn't have much of a full screen presence. He's got a couple fireballs every now and then. And the yeah, assist. which is why I think this team has a lot of flaws. Like, the Arthur assist is good for Firebrand when he's got you pinned down for mix-ups. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it. You know, it only covers so much of the ground. You can you can avoid them pretty easy with yeah, pretty much every character. So now he's rocking. He hit him with the double vine voyage, like, like he did a vine voyage. Yeah, another yeah. double vine voyage as uh, as he comes box dashed. And box is the unblockable there. I think it's very interesting how he has that timing up based off of the team super. Yeah. But Tuzo is basically just holding it down really solidly this whole match. Like, he's just barely taking any hits. Uh, and that was hilarious. Oh, he traded with that team member. Yeah. That yeah. was really startling when it happened. Well, he's level one, correct? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the, the shopping cart had an enormous hitbox. So, yeah. like, that hit just exactly at the right, like, spot on his head or something like that. And just, you know, uses that X-Factor, gets a nice, super quick unblockable, seals it up pretty quick. Uh... And then all of a sudden it started looking like, you know, this daunting task that Lorenzo had winning six games started to be like, well, he's really playing solid. Let's see what he can do. So one thing about... Uh, so here, Diego's probably going to drop this. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, but that's not, he, he drops it in a few other spots normally, not, not quite that one. I do think that there's a detriment in having that assist uh, that Lorenzo has because... Rather than go for a full punish, he was hitting hold assist. Yeah. And uh, he didn't really get much else off it besides uh, like a little bit of damage. Whereas yeah. it, he could have dashed up and uh, punished him with a full combo there. Mm -hmm. I like that conversion though. Actually, I kind of want to. And the X Factor, and the X Factor is Frank, which is a smart move given he's he's only level three at that point. But, but he's on his way. But yeah, you right? don't want him to once he has any sort of invulnerability in the uh, the, the anti air hyper. And he gets a nice free unblockable there due to the team hyper timing. So, Lorenzo's decision here, yeah, it's a TAC. Yeah. I think it's a much better idea because... Uh, Although, it, I don't really understand what he does after that TAC. He, he can't really do much else. But yeah. if he went for a reset, he was at risk of Bionic Arm X Factor Bionic yeah. Arm. Like his normal reset with the... Uh, oh, shit. Could, could he have armored through that? Yeah. But Diego didn't really take advantage of uh, grappling, hooking, hook, I don't think. Like, he was going in a lot. Yeah. And I feel like the hook is really what makes Spencer have a good uh, advantage in that matchup. But then he calls his assist recklessly. Yep. And uh, pays a bit of a price for it. The wall thing is a pretty interesting decision there. Because, like, neither character can really approach the other. Yeah, although I would actually, I'm not sure if that's smart against Spencer. Spencer does have an angled up grapple. But does it reach that? Probably not. Maybe he's too high. But it's, uh, whenever you're playing like, any sort of like aerial game against Spencer, you always have to watch out for that stupid game of chicken where it's like, is he going to up grapple? Is he going to buy on the ground by the time I land? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, and what's funny is that this particular matchup between Hulk and Spencer, they both have that chicken game. Yeah, they really do. They both really thrive on it. Uh, Hulk has Gamma Charge and then uh, Weight and then Super as yeah. well, so it's very similar. Oh, wow. And that was also incredibly startling. This game is weird. Yeah, let's, let's go back and look at that. It's just, he just bops out. Because I, I, it looks like he gets hit, but then... Well, so what happens? Uh, he definitely got hit. That's, yeah, so. that's a clean hit. Yeah, so he got hit. But the thing is, I think what happened um, is he threw out a, a Lance. So I think there's actually a Lance... Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, it looks like he hits. Yep. That's so weird. Oh, man. 
YouTube. I'm going to find a better way to do this here. Did I already pass it? No. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, so anyway, yeah, like he he gets hit by it for sure. Um, and But he's throwing out the only... Oh, it's the bottle. It's the bottle. Oh, it's yeah. The bottle. It's on the so ground. The bottle's traveling on the ground right <laughs> here. And so he gets hit and everything. But then he just sort of flips out. Yep. Okay, let me, let me get rid of this. And one. he basically flipped out because the, uh, the, the bullet... F, like he gets hit by the bionic arm, which normally is the hard knockdown, but then a bullet. Well, uh, the, 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 what you, the usual plan is then the bullets continue. Yeah, they keep him. going, but then yeah. they stop. So they stopped here, and before Spencer recovered from his bionic arm, so yeah. that's 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 great. hysterical. That is funny. Yeah, when that happened, we were like, "What? Like, what just happened?" <laughs> it's finally interesting to see it slow it down there, because uh, I had no one. I, I really boggled my mind when it happened yesterday. I'm surprised he didn't go for the kill there. Uh, like by yeah. or something. And then all of a sudden the wind seemed to be a little out of the sails. It's like, yeah, you know, because now it's four to two. Yeah. You know, and then it feels pretty, pretty narrow. Again, Lorenzo having to win six games total. Yeah. Because he goes only having to win three. So. Yeah. So like, the the momentum that he started so strong with seemed kind of a little drained at that point, but then he starts pulling it back once again. Yeah, this this little this game here where they're trying to like slowly move each other to the corner, um, I found that very interesting. It looks like in general they just kind of take turns going in and going out. Um, mm -hmm. Like right now, Fizzy Cups is just trying to go in. Now it's Lorenzo's turn to go in after he's got his assist out. Ooh. And he drops that. He tends to drop it at that point quite a bit. Yeah, Firebrand I know has a funky hitbox. Yeah, there's something that. about his hitbox there. That particular combo is very hip hop dependent on characters. Okay, so he called. He saw, I saw the assist. Um, and then that was really bad. That was a rough moment where he X factored and then still got hit. Why did he X factor? I think he just. I don't know. It looked like he just panicked. And so Lorenzo knowing to go all the way here. Yeah. He's, he's playing bottle, isn't he? No, he's playing. No, he's playing daggers. Yeah, yeah. No, he threw the bottle earlier. When he was on point. So that was actually a No, he game. always played daggers. Which is pretty much the proper assist of either. Yes, definitely. A uh, bottle has its own ooh. Yeah, a bottle has a couple things that are kinda useful, but generally the daggers are where it's at. That's that was an interesting exchange right there because Now as I recall, oh. he botches this somehow. Yeah, he got or No, he, he got what he yeah, got. Yeah, he got the other level four Frank. Um he, he burned X Factor already, so that's pretty much all I could have done. Yeah. But Franklin Jam session is so strong. Oh. I don't I don't know, maybe he missed his dash there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I don't remember much of this match. It's interesting seeing oh, all yeah, and there was, oh, shit. That was <laughs> once again Diego gets a bit reckless with his assists. And the Hulk takes you to town. Yep. And I think that that's just something Diego is learning about with Jam Session and when it's safe to call. Yeah, because, because it's not like... It's actually not that same of an assist. It's eh, fast. Sometimes it is. It's fast. The, the speed is kind of what makes it sort of safe. But yeah. he's vulnerable still. So like yeah. any kind of... Like if you call it in a meaty situation, you're going to get wrecked. Which yeah. is not the case with his Hulk assist. Or with uh, Lorenzo's Hulk assist. But I mean, it locks them down. Like the smarter way to play jam session that I've noticed is kind of like you know you call it and you just wait, yep. <laughs> so that you don't put both your characters on the line because it's gonna hold them there. If like if if they get put into blocks, done, they're gonna be held there for a while, so you have time to take a look. Oh man, yeah, he got okay. Let me rewind back to That's very interesting to see. But then he drops it there, unfortunately. Oh uh, yeah. For some reason, he didn't go with the uh, with the bionic bomber. I wish I could play it in slow motion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at him doing that yeah. next time. But basically, right there. So he's got Arthur back here. So that's already. What? He's got Arthur back here, which is already kind of a shitty situation. And earlier, Hulk was like this. He was up here. So the trick is then. Uh, basically, we all know that Spencer's gonna go for the high low. He's gonna go for a low. Or, uh, what he did right here is he went for a low, and then. But he's also got an overhead. Um, but the big thing is. About a second prior to this. Uh, okay, that's, that's good. Okay. Well, a second prior to this, he was he was blocking in the air. He was he was like way up here. He was yeah. blocking in the air. So Diego had to time it correctly, 
to uh, to wait till he lands, and that varies depending on how he push blocks as well. These advancing guards, it's yeah. really, really messy. But so then, it's good on Diego to figure out. Like he he basically had to really time it correctly to go for when when to go for his high low, and so uh, good on him for figuring that out right there. Uh, and then he knows that it was yeah, a bomb. Yeah, he should have bought a bomb. Right? There's no reason. That wasn't bought a bomb. Oh, was it? He dropped it. Looks like he did an H though. Don't you be buying a bomb with S? I, I don't know. Maybe, Maybe he did an H, but I know. Yeah. Oh, he raw probably. tag. Yeah. <laughs> so that's something frustrating. Uh, so you'll notice that he woke up with a bionic bomber there. Because <laughs> yeah, when you get hit yeah, by a raw tag, for that. oh. Yeah, I just yeah I noticed that he's just relying on those team hypers too much. It, honestly, yeah, I think he's a little too used to having chaotic play. Yeah, which covers so much more of the screen when he does it. Whereas Dante, you can kind of dodge it a bit more. Ugh. So what's he got here? Um, I recall. I want to say he screws this up though, but maybe not. Yep, there it was, and then. That made me pause, like, cause I, I, you know, he had been he'd been challenging Hulk too much already, uh -huh. and then like you watch him jump over and just almost get caked with that H. Yeah, that's I was like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right there, you're like, oh. <laughs> okay, so he drops it, and then uh, <laughs> and he goes for that, and he does a hop over. And I thought <laughs> I thought for sure he was hit there, and then he didn't, he made it out. Well, that looked so sketchy when he did it. And then yeah. he just gets gets punched in the face. And Hulk takes him to town. Does that actually... Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. He, like, rolled into that, which is weird. Yeah, I don't know if that hits overhead or not. I actually think it does. I think it does. I, I can't quite remember, but I want to say it does. Uh, I think I think the falling rocks hits over it. So, again, the momentum being very much... Uh, very different here. Yeah. Like, if you look at how... Uh, Lorenzo just, you know, he went from zero to having three. You know, if this was a normal set, it'd be over. Yep. Diego would be out. Yep. Um, so it's a really interesting thing where normally, in a normal tournament right here, we would have had a result. Yep. I think this is, yeah, this is the very first instance that we had with, with our double jeopardy rule where uh, the loser, yeah, well, we're basically someone got screwed over or whatever, but someone really, the disadvantage was, like, actually relevant there. Yeah. So, all right, moving on. I'm forgetting which one actually plays it. <laughs> so I think they actually had a talk during this 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 character select here. Mm, Diego was asking, "Does that does that hit overhead?" Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it was actually kind of interesting because Firebrand did the lockdown too with the super. Yeah. Um, I remember Firebrand thinking that did not look like it was going to work, and then it you know, <laughs> turned out in their favor. But you know, it's, he, all of a sudden, Suzo has it tied up even. Yep. Uh, oh wait, it's oh, tied yeah, up? Yeah. No, no it's tied up. No, yeah, I, basically in the previous round it would have been over. Oh wow, for some uh, reason, okay. You know, essentially, Suzo had 3-0'd him. Uh, <laughs> or not 3 0 3 one him? Yeah, 3-1. Yeah, uh, and now it's actually tied up, uh, which is... You know, that's a pretty impressive feat normally. It's like taking four games off somebody in a tournament sure. in a row oh. outside of a grand final. Because <laughs> this was losers finals. Which, yes, which, yes. Uh, losers I losers forgot finals. that we did that. Yeah, I thought we, I thought we didn't do double jeopardy in the finals, but I mean, technically, yeah, technically for for losers finals, you still have to play. Yeah, like yeah. With the grand finals, they grand, it finals has, grand finals has like a double jeopardy rule built into it. Yeah. You send them to double. You have to send someone to losers. Yeah. Um, but real quick, for time's sake, uh, is there anything in particular here that you want to keep going over? I, I, otherwise, I'll just. Well, that was pretty sweet, but that's all. <laughs> was. I remember thinking that was a pretty pretty good deal, and I don't think Tubazo actually gets five wins. I think he starts to lose his momentum here. So real quick, I'll just skip to the very end for for closures. Sure. Here. Let's see. Yeah, we believe that Lorenzo takes that. Uh, or Diego, Diego. Yeah, sorry, Diego takes that next game. And, then, so. and I forget if it, I don't think it came down to the very last game. But to me, I thought that was just really impressive. I thought Tubazo played really well. Uh, I mean, Tubazo has a habit of really kind of playing with his heart. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like he'll kind of just, you know, it's not just, oh, he's just doing stuff to do it, but, you know, he kind of, he, he's, he's a real gut feeling kind of player. Yep. Uh, 
And like you kind of, you could kind of tell he was really in the zone for a lot of these matches. Like he was really thinking clearly, uh, and it was really working out for him. But then you know, the the real me and him talked about this a little after the match. The real discouraging part about playing against the proper Frank team is that when you get hit by that that first hit, it's like it feels so doubly like bad because it's like not only am I going to lose this character. But then I'm maybe not gonna have an even matchup for the rest of the game. <laughs> right. It's very, it's very similar to playing a Phoenix team. It really is. It's like, and sort of a Virgil anchor, <laughs> but that's a little different. You're like, I'm, 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 I just got hit by a combo that just gave. That's, it's like that combo gave, gave them five bars. <laughs> yeah, it's like it, it feels very much like that. So there's that real like I feel like there's a psychological factor to Frank teams. Like when you get hit with that first first hit and you know they're not going to drop it and Frank's going to level up, it becomes like extra mentally taxing because it's like, like you don't feel like you can just outplay your opponent at that point. Like you feel like you have to do something like really kind of desperate to make something happen or you feel like you have to <laughs> uh, like hope they, they do something pretty foolish uh, to, to, get, to get a chance. Which, you know, is, is pretty unique. There's not a lot of teams that have that. Pretty much him, Phoenix, things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, momentum being just a, a very recurring theme in Marvel. Uh, whether it's incoming mix-ups, your characters like Phoenix and Frank. Yeah, Frank teams really feel a lot like the sort of strategies that, like, RTSs have. Where, like, it's kind of like you feel like you should just say GG, like, yep. before the match is actually over. Because sure. you just know the inevitability of the... Uh, <laughs> Of the outcome at that point, uh, you know, it's like when you when you've been six pooled or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. And it's just like, well, I'm not going to be pulling this back. The resources aren't there. The time isn't there. Fair but yeah. Enough. Okay, so that pretty much concludes our match analysis. Um, Good stuff to both of them, though. In that in that that matchup, that was a really fun set to watch yesterday. Definitely. Uh, All right, so. Our next segment, um, let's go back to the agenda here. Our next segment will be uh, a player spotlight on uh, Luminaire. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go ahead and cut to that real quick. Go. Luminaire is a uh, is a guy player from uh, Arizona. Uh, well, he is. Uh, his name is Mike. He's a pretty cool dude. Um, mm -hmm. Luminaire is from the Chrono Trigger. <laughs> uh, Was it? I actually forget that. Yeah, it's a special attack from Chrono. Trigger. Oh, that's right. Um, what a nerd! <laughs> <laughs> he's uh he's been known to uh, affiliate himself with Spiral Series Team Hazmat. I don't know what MMS is. I think that was his team. Like, or I don't even know what that was. Yeah, I don't, I don't, know. I don't know what the MMS was at this point. But uh, Mike just he's he's a Street Fighter player through and through. Yeah, it's we've I've been trying to get him to play other games, but you know, t honestly, it's hard to get people to play new games solely because of the time investment. Sure. And that's usually, I think he maybe would have got into some of the other games, but you know, he's got real life. Yeah. Oh, uh, so MMS is an online clan. That's oh, what that's right. Says. But yeah, he's pretty much full-on Street Fighter. Yep. Uh, so, to that end, he uh, has, he, he plays Guy as his main character, um, but uh, he has a bunch of a bunch of different secondaries. He's yeah, he was playing really Sagat yesterday, player. which was funny. Maybe that's why he got seventh. <laughs> Actually, it might have been, I think he stuck with Sagat against uh, Isaac. Maybe oh, wow. he shouldn't have. Okay. But yeah, um, he can play quite a few characters pretty well. Um, so yeah, he mainly known for his guy though. Uh, he's had a bunch of different tournament appearances mm -hmm. uh, throughout his career as a fighting game player. Yeah, he's one of the few guys that's been willing to travel here and there, mm -hmm. uh, and actually show up to to other majors. I mean, really, he's only been to like some of the California ones and like Evo and stuff like that. But you know, that's kind of what we're limited to in Arizona most of the time. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, <laughs> that alone is a barrier, like getting people to not be <laughs> not just stay in Arizona just going yeah. to California just a big deal oh yeah definitely but it also you know they it, they get a huge draw anyway so it's a you know it's a good idea for people but uh, another um, one of his big tournament appearances was this is it uh, it was a tournament in Tucson uh, mm -hmm. where we had combo fiend fly out and play uh, I think combo fiend actually won that tournament um, but yeah. Mayor ran a very heavy money match with him and that's actually what this picture is from Oh, was it? I didn't get to go to that, so I, I, I just remember seeing this picture. Very, Combo Fiend's a pretty cool guy, and I think uh, they got some... Indeed. They got some... They traded strats, for sure. Uh, so then, uh, his most recent 
notable tournament appearance was uh, SC. He actually showed up on stream and nearly beat Infiltration. Mm-hmm. Who Infiltration at that time was the undisputed. Um, oh, he was it. He was the the king. He was the king. He had just gotten off of winning Evo twenty twelve uh, so handily that it, it made his finals boring in my yeah. opinion. Like he just beat the shit out of everybody. And then he went on to win the anniversary tournament and tore everybody apart there, too. This wasn't before he lost. Like, he hadn't lost to Cave, right? <laughs> oh, maybe he lost to Cave, right? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Which was, you know, much to everyone's. But either way, Infiltration was favored to win that tournament. Uh, I think, I don't know if he actually I think did. this was before that. I uh, think that happened before the Cave Red lost. Maybe. But anyway. Uh, but he was favored to win SCR 2013. I actually think he did win it. Pretty sure he did. Uh, and then uh, Mike fought valiantly, took him to the very, very last uh, last round. Uh, just showed a dominant performance in general. Yeah, I've like actually it. yet to see this matchup. And uh, so uh, I heard about it, though, when it happened. And sure. I remember Mike really was talking about how he was... I think he knew he was in the bracket. Like, he knew he was going to be there. So he put, like, a lot of work into specifically fighting Akuma right. and figuring out some tech for him. Uh, which is what I think is honestly a real strength of Mike. Mike really is a lab monster. He's figured out a lot of stuff on his own for Guy. He's he's not the best kind of cut is steel. Willing to take other people's tech. Um. So, yeah, like that's that's the thing about Mike as a player is he's just incredibly dedicated. And uh, let me go ahead and turn the light back. Okay, sure. Computer, keep talking about. <laughs> yeah, basically, like he. Uh, you know, I talk to Mike a lot online. We just chatted up a lot, and half the time we're talking, he's just talking about how he's, you know, learning safe jumps and you know trying to figure. Yeah, you know, he won't. Uh, he won't wait for somebody to find the tech that he needs. Usually, like if there's something that he needs to know, uh, he will try to to figure it out his, on his own, which really is the mark of a really proper good player. Uh, which is you know something that I personally am lazy about. I'm very <laughs> very lazy about figuring out my own tech. Uh, and I think that definitely hinders me, uh, and I don't think that's a problem for Mike at all. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I haven't actually watched this matchup, so... Yeah, for time's sake, we're probably not going to go too deep into it. Sure. Um, but he definitely had a pretty so- strong showing. He did some things like he whiff-punished with Crouch Strong a lot. Like oh, Akuma yeah. Akuma Sweep. He whiff-punished Akuma Sweep. With his Crouch Strong or, punch? Uh, Sand Strong, sorry. Sand Strong. Sand Strong. Um, uh, interesting. I, I think, think he actually did Stand Strong. That. Stand Strong, EX Shoulder, FADC Ultra. Yeah, Mike is pretty much... Oh! oh. <laughs> 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 a whole bunch of the Tucson crew. Yeah. Uh, rooting for him. Mike practices a lot with the Tucson guys. Probably more than anybody uh, in the Phoenix scene. Because yep. uh, Tucson lately takes uh, the Street Fighter type of games much more seriously. Yeah, to the point where he's probably one of the last lines of defense for the Phoenix. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, play, players. Uh, so, he's uh, he's come a long way. Uh, he just, yeah, he was very, very, very green when he first started. And then uh, since then, he's just torn this game apart as far as figured out uh, what is what is safe, what is not. And then different setups and, and punishes. Yeah, I'm surprised. He probably botched that. That safe jump. That's a safe jump he loves to do. Yep. And that's safe will, jump option select. Yeah, and it will be three frame DPs. That's something Guy has that very few people or a few characters get to do. <laughs> <laughs> Normally the three frame DPs are, you know, you just have to work around. <laughs> so, yeah, a couple more things about Mike. He's a, he's a personal trainer, uh, so you can tell that when he dedicates himself to something, He's very, very intent on the... Oh, yeah, he's he's got that, that bro science life. <laughs> <laughs> the bro science life. Uh, uh, he's been teaching me a lot about fitness lately. Uh, <laughs> I've been pestering him a lot about stuff. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a Spartan warrior, that one. <laughs> but, yeah, that, look at that driven face. Fucking, look at this guy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. He's like, oh, oh he's, I see how it is. He's into it. There's there's one particular moment uh, that I want to cover Mike until we hit that moment in the video. But, uh, yeah. He's just... Yeah. Now, the sad part is Mike definitely does have a bit of a history of getting very far and then kind of, you know, not sealing the deal in the end. Yes. Which, if he can if he could manage to just quell that, he would be a really big force. 
Um, and there's times though, not to say there's times I've seen him do some ridiculously clutch comebacks though. So oh, really? he does, he's not completely devoid of that stuff, but it, it seems like uh, that's his biggest uh, personal flaw lately is when he's really got it on the line. He seems to always get very close and then make one bad decision. And that's usually because he gets he's a very aggressive oh. player. Well, he's just whip punches. Yeah, so. oh my god. Oh, look at look at look, look at yeah. that. <laughs> I think I was like somewhere in the yeah. back over there. <laughs> Is he throwing the support in? Yeah, we were all like cheering, Mike, Mike. Yeah, Mike, of course. Mike, I mean, Mike. you know, when you when you got one of your boys doing well against the, the real the champion of the moment. Yeah. That's a that's an awesome awesome thing. Ooh. I think the commentators were actually saying like like they heard us, and they were like, "We think the guy's name is Mike." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Mike. For honestly, I think he's a he's one of those guys that not a lot of people really uh, know, like nationwide, because we, you know, the AZ scene doesn't get to travel very much. But I think he's a dude that can really. Stick oh, it he's, to, he's, yeah. He's, 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, I'll we'll take this. I think Mike can really stick it to just about anybody pretty well. Like he can give a good set to, to any player. Yeah, definitely. Um, win or lose, like he's not gonna let anybody take it from him for free. <laughs> Unless he plays to God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not the best idea. So I just want to see this last part and then we'll move on. Look at that. I think he actually dodges it. Oh. oh. Yeah, that looked like it was pretty safe from the demon. Uh, oh, man, those uppercuts. Oh! Oh my god, that stand was strong. It's Look at that. Such an insane button. I know, but he whip punished Akuma Sweep, burned three bars. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> People Look might, at this! <laughs> People might not know this, but like, if you see a lot of videos online of, uh, of like, Hearing disrespectful people like commentating over like Latisse matches and stuff like that. I, I've all, I've seen so many people complaining on YouTube about who are these guys yelling and blah blah. That's the Tucson crew is very loud. Yeah, they are. <laughs> They're pretty much notorious at this point. But that is the face of a man on a mission right there. <laughs> so Mike does end up losing this set, um, but man, it was very very code. close. But uh, that has definitely been his shining moment so far in his fighting game career. We look forward to a lot more to it. Wait, let me fast forward to the very end. I just want, I just want to see want to the see crucial Bruce. mistake. Right. Yeah, I want to see what, what goes wrong. I think he just gets messed up. Yeah, does he just lose his momentum? Yeah. But I mean, that's also a thing with Guy. Guy is a character that like oh, he, he needs to carry on momentum. He doesn't have the best escape options. Oh, actually, yeah. So at this point, he he actually won the next round. And oh wow. Uh, okay, we'll just watch the whole thing. Yeah, yeah sure. It has like like two minutes yeah, well, left. I think we'll be all right for time. But uh, yeah, he's just he gets, he falls into the vortex here. But we were all like, yeah, he's he's got this now. All he has to do is just win one round. And yeah, he the whole thing. And then this, yeah. and then Akuma happens. Yep, infiltration Akuma. Yeah. <laughs> I but think yeah. that that that's the momentum killer right there. Like he saw it in his face. Like he's like, oh, I guess yeah. I just I just lost. I just gave away my chance. But I also think kudos to Mike. Like you can see him really trying to keep his focus. Yeah. Uh, you know, which is something that plenty of players struggle with. Wow. Man, that's short. But do you, you notice that, like, he just threw three things out in a row? Like, yeah. No, Mike gets, Mike is a very squirrely player, and he likes to, like, I, I feel like something that he does a lot is when he, when he feels, um, when he feels like he's losing his momentum, he'll get kind of recklessly aggressive. Yep. Because he just desperately wants that, that control back. And sometimes that doesn't work out against... Oh, that was it. Yeah, and there's the heartbreaker. Yep, and there we go. Yep. Oh, Mike, he let us all down. <laughs> no, that's... A, you know, I mean, to, to give such a, a a strong match against somebody who's really, you know, unquestionably one of the best players in the world. You know, uh, it's one of those things where people... A lot of times people think they aren't good players and... Uh, in scenes that don't get a lot of exposure, and really, some sometimes people can get really good in a in a smaller vacuum. Uh, it's just a matter of personal dedication. Yeah. And that's the thing, Mike. You know, really, you know, he pretty much he plays this game. That's that's what he plays. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Uh, so yeah, he's he's definitely one of our better players. One of my personal favorite players to watch uh, of our of our local guys. One of my personal favorite players to play against. 
one because I think we actually don't have disparaging matchups, <laughs> so it feels a little more fun for me. Fair enough. But uh, but yeah, there's, Good shit, there's our boy. All right, so then moving on, we are closing nearing the end of the show here. Uh, we have a special segment uh, which. Uh, we intend to bring this to each uh, into into uh, each show from here on out. Um, where the, we have a different co-host every show, and uh, I am gonna try to give the co-hosts uh, just a segment that they can talk about whatever they want to. And uh, uh, Brain Five, why don't you tell me like what uh, you have chosen as your topic? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk about a person who I think is my favorite player, and you know. Some people will be like, oh, fi fanboy, whatever. But uh, I think Daigo is just the best. Uh, and very specifically, the reason I wanted to talk about this is goes back to what I was bringing up during my introduction, is that uh, I think there's a really uh, strong link between uh, competition and philosophy. Uh, and I think a lot of that also really... You know, like, I think there's a really funny thing that happens when you see top players talking about what it takes to be, a, like, you know, truly good in these games. And usually it's basically you find what the strongest thing is and you use it to its strongest effects. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. And then you see a lot of people talk about the definition of a scrub, which a scrub is basically usually somebody that thinks they're better than they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, then can't handle it. Uh, when, when, you know, they lose, they, they think something, they perceive something to be cheap, etc., and, you know, a lot of people, myself included, definitely struggle with, like, you know, keeping their own egos in check in the face of losing, especially in the face of losing to things that they uh, that they don't perceive they should have lost to or, you know, wasn't good enough to lost to. And, you know, you definitely know for sure I've been on that end of being that irrational idiot uh, <laughs> doing that. We all have. Uh, and uh, the thing that I think is really interesting is seeing even really top, top players who people who say those things who are like you know you gotta pick a top tier and blah 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 and then you'll see them talking about stuff and then even they will like fall into that sort of scrubby sort of uh, mentalities of saying things you know I've seen guys like Justin Wong and PR Rog and uh, F Champ you know like the, the best of the games that they're in mm -hmm. you know complain about characters and be like oh so cheap blah 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 saying the exact same things that uh you know, they would look down on lesser players for saying. But, you know, they also have the fundamentals and they, they, they know more of what they're doing, so people give them credit. And then at the same time, it tends to propagate worse players to sort of parrot that uh, thing. Like, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll fall into that same rhythm. Like, well, they're saying it, so it's totally true. Uh, right. And the guy that I think exemplifies the complete opposite of this and, like, the true, like, strong mentality for competition is Daigo. And it's, you know, when you see him play, he's known for that stone face. Mm -hmm. And I'm certain he must have things that he thinks are pretty cheap in the games. He probably just keeps them to himself more often than not. There's got to be some t some conversations he's had with fucking, you know, Tokido or <laughs> yeah. the people he plays with. I'm certain he's not above it. But in terms of, like, his public persona and, and when he's really trying to win, he truly exemplifies... Uh, composure, uh, which I think is the absolute definition of not being a scrub. So, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, so you, you told me that you, you sent me a couple of videos and you have some examples then. Uh, would you like me to play them along while you talk? Uh, or, yeah, well, let me, let me, let me just get to them. Uh, this, all of these clips are from what is probably my favorite matchup that I've ever seen in Street Fighter, and this was... I forget if this was 2012 or this was just AE. Uh, this uh, was... I think this is 2012. No, this is AE. Okay, never mind. Yeah, because Daigo's playing. Yeah. yeah, this was AE. Um, and this was the time Daigo wasn't winning a lot out of the out of Japan, but he was pretty much... Because he wasn't traveling very much, mm -hmm. and but he was really dominating like everywhere in Japan at the time. Like with Kazunoko being kind of the only exception. Yeah, he had just been sponsored, so it, like that was when all these news articles yeah. were coming out about how I need to play. Like he, he's taking it much, much, much more seriously because he's sponsored now. Yeah, so he started playing 
what was the top character in the game, which pretty much was unquestionably the top character in the game at the Very time. Well, yes, yes. Uh, I think, you know, in light of how good Cammy became and all that, I still think Yone, he was probably better than her. Yep. Uh, um, and it was against Sien, and this was right when Sien had decided to start picking up Yen and really getting into what the character could do. And at the same time, not a lot of people really understood Yen. And Daigo, they even mentioned that Daigo said to the now that like, I can see earlier that he's like, there's only two characters I don't understand in the game at this point. One is Gan and the other is Khan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and basically, this is uh, a set that Daigo loses. Um, and it's pretty interesting just the way he loses the book. He, he basically starts with Yun mm -hmm. and starts being, you know, against Gan, which is definitely not in Gan's favor, uh, and starts losing. And then he switches to Guile, which at the time, you know, uh, Daigo had a really good. Guile and Super, right? Uh, and Guile is a definite counterpick against Gen, uh, and at that point he starts losing as well, and he switches to Ryu, and he almost brings it back. I think he loses seven to five okay. uh, of this grand final set. But anyway, the point of it is I'm really just highlighting spots where Daigo loses because I think how a player loses is really the uh, the merit of a real strong player, okay. more so than how a player wins. Okay, so then, um, what's this first clip you're sending me here? Uh, let's see. The first clip is basically, it's it's not too far in the set, it's 1-1, one, one, and uh, Daigo basically was in a position to uh, pretty much lock the game up, and then he drops a combo and loses it. And then if you just look at his face at the end, uh, and I'll illustrate what is significant about this a little after. Um, you know, it's typically Yen combos, gets that famous, but yeah, drops it right there. Like, he could have had an extra juggle off of that, uh, that lunge punch in the corner, and he drops it. Goes in, gambles on it, and then, uh, you know, gets hit. And then right there, Daigo, nothing. Now, when you think about people you know, no matter where you are in your scenes, when somebody drops a combo and they lose, you rarely see somebody stay stone face. Like, they, they, the inclination is they want to blame the other player, mm -hmm. or like, they know they should blame themselves, but they can't keep themselves together. You know, like, you're, you know, like, the, there's the definite frustration. Sure. But look at Daga's face, you know, it's pretty early in the set still, but nothing. He's just stone face. Okay. Uh, that's the typical, typical Daga look. So let's go on to the next one here. And yeah, this is, he switched to, uh, Guile at this point. And let's see. Yeah, and then right there you see it. This is this is something you see, and this is something that I think you kind of notice getting into Daigo's psychology. I guess is that at the time he was so dominant that you almost thought maybe he was. People kind of wondered how long he was going to stay playing the games because mm -hmm. maybe just you know he you know it'd been so long since somebody really dethroned him or really gave him a problem, and then you kind of see this like he loses this match, which is a, like he's definitely not the counter pick in this matchup, and look at the little smirk that shows up on his face. Which is pretty unlike Daigo. Like he kind of he, he pulls it back. He smirks and then kind of and kind of <laughs> goes back to his stone face. And I kind of think that's a hint of like him having fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, huh. and the point of that uh, that I really want to illustrate is that I struggle with this when I'm doing it, but I've been I've been getting a little better at it recently. Is that usually when somebody's playing against somebody and they do something that you know you know, beats what they think that they were thinking, you know, like you think you're thinking ahead of your opponent mm -hmm. and then you fuck up or, you know, really they're thinking ahead of you and they, they get you with something. And, you know, the initial reaction is usually frustration, just immediate frustration. When in reality, what makes these games interesting is that somebody's thinking smart enough to make it difficult. Right. Like it's almost not like when you're really just slamming on people, how fun really does it become? <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like there's, there's, a, there's actually something that's, more valuable about playing at somebody that that's that's really hitting the level that you're at. Um, so that's something I think that's the very first hint of him kind of being like, "Here's me really trying to take advantage," and this person is outthinking me completely. <laughs> and that's because they illustrate in the uh, the match that uh, Cien plays against Game Out all the time, and basically learn that like you know the matchup is definitely in Guile's favor, but. Sure. But Cien knew the matchup, like inside and out. So that was a swear saying, like, oh, okay, I get you. Yeah, like he's, he's put it in on this. Yeah. Um, so this next one here. 
Yeah, this one basically, uh, Sien just, just you know, lands an ultra off a nice little hit, and you and once again he's pretty much back to this sort of stone face. But you sort of see him think about it a bit, like, yeah, all day. <laughs> like <laughs> you kind of see him realizing that this 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 sort of uh, strategy is that that you know he thinks should work isn't really working, and that's you sort of you you sort of rarely see him do this at all. But you know, you also know he's really trying to think about what his options are. Hmm. Uh, okay. And yeah, that's just a, a pretty quick one. But next one here. Let's see where was I on this? I forget which one I pulled up for this. But yeah, once again, it's him losing. <laughs> Let's see what was it that I pulled that one up for? Oh, that, basically, I think it was just another one where you could kind of see him thinking about it, but uh, that was not nearly as important. I probably could have edited that one out. Uh, this is definitely where it becomes truly interesting to me. Uh, Miles Reza didn't kill. Yeah. But watch Daga's face here. Here, pull this up full screen. Shoot. Oh. So, okay, one one thing in particular I do want to note is that if you look at Shen's face, like, Shen was like, oh, man, I just won. Like, oh, he, yeah. He, he like, threw his head back and <laughs> did, the, did the emo hair flip thing. And, like, yeah. Like, that was... So then you want, there's a stark contrast here. Here, let's pull this up full screen if you can. There, uh, <laughs> you know, <it's> right on <laughs> You see Daigo full-on smile. And this was, you know, like, unheard of. I, I I cannot think of many other times where I've seen this happen, and you know like CN definitely when you see him losing throughout the set he's keeping his composure pretty well as, as pretty strong as well because CN's a really good player, mm -hmm. but uh, you know you can kind of see him uh, definitely struggle as you were mentioning kind of fidgeting a bit more and stuff like that, but then you know there's Daigo with an actual smile and you kind of get the impression that he's really enjoying it even though he's losing, and that's kind of the point I really want to illustrate is that most people when they're losing they can't seem to enjoy it and and that seems so contradictory because you know basically most people will be of the mentality that like why should I enjoy losing right and really the reason you should enjoy it is because it's it's promoting you to think and stretch outside of yourself uh, and okay. not become complacent and I think philosophically that actually applies so far beyond fighting games <laughs> And yeah, I'm totally maybe overthinking all this. No, but, I think that that's yeah. <laughs> I think that's very relevant. About, like that that really people people constantly think about like how to become a better player. And, uh, a lot of times, being a better player means being a better person, yeah. and that's really a weird thing to to get on. So let's move on to the next one here. Oh yeah, this was just an awesome moment where there's a, so a he, double KO. So he switched to Ryu and everything. Oh yeah, he switched to Ryu and he starts pulling it back like really, really well. And this is essentially, you know, the last he's about to be eliminated. And notice specifically, notice how calm he is. He's one round away from being eliminated. He got a double KO. <laughs> the pressure is on. Look at Sien's face, like feeling the pressure of wanting to win because he's he's maybe about to lock it up. Mm -hmm. And look at Daigo's face. Daigo is in a total bad situation <laughs> and he's just totally stone faced so few people can do that or can be said to to like i can't imagine people uh, not you know sweating bullets but yeah. he's just there he is just totally focused all right so this next clip here what happens uh this is him winning the round i think yeah he but this is right after the double ko oh, this is when daigo actually wins and daigo wins and starts pulling it back and like, and you sort of see him just continuing to be focused. And like, again, like Shen, just like he, yes, you know, I looks, just took this yeah. loss. Like, what can I learn from it? I need to, you know. Need but like, you see Shen looking down, yeah. uh, keeping his composure a little less. You know, he's still got a good lead, so he doesn't need to sweat it too much. Right. But you can tell he kind of is. Yeah. Meanwhile, Daigo is still just at, you know, the, the brink of elimination. Same mentality, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> just to totally keeping composure. And then there's a little bit of a grin. You see it again. <laughs> you see he's kind of, you know, that's the other thing is essentially that's the point where, you know, you can kind of tell he's like, somebody just pushed me right to the limit and I, and I, and I rose to the occasion right then, uh -huh. which I'm certain was probably a gratifying moment for him. <laughs> so speaking of gratifying moments, then you have this last clip here too, right? Okay. And this is a little hard to see. Like you sort of see it on the tip of his, uh, the edge of his face as he gets out of frame. You kind of see it when he walks back into it, but this is the end of the set. 
This is when he loses. He just loses. That's it. You sort of see him as he gets up. It's, oh. it's almost maybe too hard to see. Where he's still, he's actually smiling. He shakes the hand and he smiles. I'll get you out of that one. It's pretty almost like it's. You sort of see him smile more as he walks back into frame. Oh, just missed it. Fourteen seconds. Like a little bit of a yeah, it's, a, it's really hard to see. I think I saw a grin. Yeah, you sort of see the grin, and then just let it play for a bit. He kind of walks out and then walks back into the frame, and you kind of see him just stand there and uh, a little little after. See, it might be right after this. Yeah, he kind of there he is. There's, he's fucking smiling. <laughs> 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 he just lost that set, and you know, and he seems actually pleased about it. Yeah, like he he made that solid comeback, but it wasn't just about how he won. But he also how but he lost, how he lost, right? and then at the same time, you could kind of tell like he enjoyed running into somebody that actually gave him a real challenge. For you know, the first time in probably a while. I'm sure there's there's plenty of other players that I'm sure to challenge him and stuff like that. But you know, like. In a tournament setting, that was the first time in a while where you saw somebody stick it to him. And stick it to him with a character that was very unusual, uh -huh. and did it with bad matchups behind him. With the exception of Ryu. And then that's the other thing that's just interesting, is the character that he really pulled it back with was the one that probably has the worst matchup against Yen. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just because, you know, it's what I go back to a little bit of what I mentioned before, is, you know, Ryu's not the best, but he is totally capable. And then picking a character that suits you, that's capable, is really all you need. You just can't pick characters that are actually incapable, <laughs> right, right. And there, which there are some. Um, I think that's really fascinating. Uh, there was one actually other thing in the previous clip, last little bit, I guess. Don't can we can we get the sound? Oh yeah, sure. Because the commentators just made a nice little uh, note on it that I agreed with, which pretty much goes inside Is on it? of what I was saying. No fumble. It's probably a little less. It's a fireball. Yeah. And then this is it. It's comfortable. Nice. Alright, Daigo takes it. Nice. And he's low jab. Up 3 6. Even a wake up ultra yeah. would not have hit because he's doing the low jab. Daigo is smiling. I wonder yeah. what he finds so amusing. No, this is the funny thing. See, he wins tournaments and uh -huh. you see this dead pan expression on his face. Exactly. Now he's in the deepest hole he could find yes. himself in, in a tournament and he's smiling. He is smiling. The man is That's insane. why, as, as a pure. Um, as a pure fighting game fan, he's yeah. enjoying this too. Yeah, he's enjoying this This too. is when you meet your match, yeah. you're tired of botting all those people in Tokyo, Shinjuku <laughs> Station, and you're like, you know what, I gotta travel to foreign lands, just like Ra Ryu has to do, yeah. and enjoy it. No, the most important thing, when you see it every day, it's a joy to see something you've never seen before. Yes. When somebody has taken the time to figure out something you've never seen before, yes. then it's always a joy. Yeah. Oh, nice combo. That's pretty much it. I kind of really agree with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's it's like something out of a TV show where like this guy is like you know the undisputed best and then yeah. and then like something happens and suddenly he has a challenge again and just like wakes up. It's kind of a real spirit, you know human drama element to it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and that's one reason I find Daigo really inspiring. And then of course like to close it up is just you kind of the, the thing that's really impressive about Daigo is that like when you see when he truly commits. That like what he does later, as is demonstrated by whatever he saw when he played against Sien in the first ten uh -huh. and won ten zero. Oh and yeah, then, <laughs> and then uh, and then against Infiltration, who we just showed, you know, playing Mike, who at the time was the best and gave Daigo numerous losses. And then you know he just trained and figured out what was you know it's the real proper mentality is what is it that I that that can help me actually win and then. Planning and executing. Uh, first, people, you know, myself included, where I fall back and be like, "Oh, if I can just, you know, stay strong on fundamentals, like I can think, think my opponent all the time." No, you really have to have game plans in mind and think very far ahead of your opponent outside of the actual game and stuff like that. Right. Uh, and I think Daigo just exemplifies all these things. So you know, I don't know who, if anybody watches this and they're just like, "Oh, blah blah, fanboy, whatever." I think this guy really exemplifies a very strong philosophical approach to these kinds of games and it, the result is a whole lot of winning <laughs> <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> and and losing with with absolute uh, grace 
you know, maybe he feels salty about stuff and just doesn't let it out. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, he never lets anybody see him, uh, you know, hit hit a, a low point in his attitude. <laughs> He's like a luchador, right? He doesn't take off the mask for the yeah. kids. Yeah, <laughs> he really doesn't take the mask off for the kids. <laughs> All right. But that's pretty much, that's that's my, my spiel on that. Very cool. So, um... With that, I think we're gonna close out. The, uh, traditionally, we will we have uh, our co-host here, who's like yeah, Brain Pipes has done a lot to get all that stuff prepared, and so I'd like to uh, ask him a couple more questions about what he thinks uh, will happen in the coming uh, the coming events here. So we have this Ram Bat season coming up. Dialing it back from an international sensation like Daigo. We have, yeah. We're still in Arizona. This show is still about us, like be, like how our players need to have, be in the spotlight and be on the highlight reel. Uh, so we have our Ram Bat season coming up uh, still. Uh, it's going to be the last two Ram Bats are, uh, are on, what is it, the 12th and the 2nd, or the start, the 19th and the 2nd. Um, and... Uh, you got some favorite players that you'd like like to see mm -hmm. do well in the Red Bats. Uh, yeah, for Cross Tekken, I always enjoy watching Rock play Rockus uh, because Rock tends to find unusual stuff. Like he's really good at just digging in and and finding really cheap stuff. Usually with uh, with characters that aren't like obviously obviously cheap. Um, you know, like. Abe definitely goes for like what's the top, <laughs> <laughs> and like you know, and he'll, he'll tend to, to roll with that. Where Rock will kind of look a little farther into characters that people aren't using as often that he thinks you know has that sort of potential, uh, and I think that usually just makes interesting matches because he'll he'll pick you know like Yoshimitsu or uh, some of the stranger characters, which definitely are good. People see why the character is good. You play but, Shaoyu too. Yeah, Shaoyu, but 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 people won't usually commit usually out of like fear of playing the weirder characters. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, he played Ibuki for a while. And now he's he's playing uh, Makoto and Four. Oh yeah. You know, which are not top characters, but you know, but still dangerous. Uh, so it makes him fun to watch. Uh, and yeah, for for AE, Luminaire, Mike, you know, as we said earlier, definitely one of my favorite guys to watch. Uh, and Marvin hasn't really been coming out. I noticed uh, Kyoku. Yeah, he's kind of on a hiatus for from five years at the moment. Oh, is he? Yeah. I actually wasn't sure about that. But yeah, I haven't seen him quite quite around yet. But when he when he does come out, and he doesn't really play for that much, I really enjoy watching him play. Just because he even plays characters that I really just don't like. <laughs> it's like Bison and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But his his reactions and his spacing and his his game plan are always really fun to watch. Uh, and then Isaac, uh, who's usually been doing really well, as always. Because um, one, like, I like that he's been trying to, to work it with Evil Ryu lately, which is funny to me. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, like, Isaac just has in, in really insane reactions. So, yes, like, he it's, does. it's really awesome watching him play and just not let people slide with stuff. Uh, and then for Marley, you know, Armando, uh, our friend Angelic, uh, you know, at the moment he's pretty much just uh, pretty dominant. Yeah, he's uh, the undisputed best in Arizona. Yeah, right now. I mean, it's not much of a question. Uh, so, you know, it's always nice to see him uh, continue to improve and, and continue to, to be hungry for it. And then uh, I'm a big fan of Jared, Never Going Pro. You know, he's known kind of online as, as a spammer, but people that understand these games a little deeper realize that he's not just spamming. Like, he's, uh, he's got some real zoning patterns that are really annoying. <laughs> and uh, I don't know he's been playing Morgan now as well because normally he plays Point Sentinel, which is hilarious when you watch him lock people down with Point Sentinel, <laughs> right? right. Uh, and really do it well. But I think he's he's starting to much like everybody realizing the bottleneck of teams uh, in Marvel, and he's and he's going to the the more effective zoning, which I think you know will only prove to be good for him. Uh, and then Aziz, just because I've been picking up Magneto, and Aziz is. Uh, probably the best Magneto we have now in Arizona. Uh, so it's always fun for me to watch and learn from him. Uh, as well as he's just, you know, he's he plays so energetically and spastically that it's just fun <laughs> to watch. <laughs> he's got super good movement. Uh, and then, yeah, I guess for the, uh, the the Danger Room, the upcoming Danger Room qualifiers, uh, depending on who shows up, depending on, you know, assuming these people show up, these are the people I think have a, a well, good chance of there, getting There are it. eight spots for Arizona, yeah. right? So you have eight people. So we have eight people, potentially. Uh, 
I know a few people can't be there, so I would have maybe included a few other people instead. But of the people that I think can be there and maybe will show up, uh, I think you. Yeah. Uh, I think Sean Forward is, you know, almost unquestionably, if he if he shows up, we'll get there. Um, I think Aziz definitely has a great chance of doing it. Uh, Tuzo has definitely been on quite a bit of a roll. Same with uh, Diego Fizzy Cups. Uh, as they've both been placing, as we saw earlier, yeah. really high. Lorenzo always places second or third, and he's been featured yeah. on the show twice already. He's a, he's a, yeah, he's been a, yeah, yeah, he's been on both episodes. Uh, honestly, I'm putting myself in there, and not because of my tournament standing being all that amazing, but because you know I play casuals with everybody. I know that I can definitely do it sometimes, but I need to put some work in. Which is what I'm going to try to do. So I'm going to try to live up to putting myself to be conceited and putting myself on this list. Sure, sure. But I think I can do it. I think I, I don't think uh, it's beyond me. Uh, and then I definitely think Nam, because Nam, thanks to finally dropping Iron Fist, <laughs> is uh, being on a roll with a good team. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, my dark horse, I think, is uh, Yazawa Lazaro, because you know, like a lot of people. You know, his team, I think, is honestly, like, a really not particularly great team. It's like a crappier version of Diego's team, I think. Kind of. I mean, it's, it's not With a really, I think it's really not a good team for the most part. But it also has some tricky stuff. Uh -huh. And it's yeah. got some funny stuff that he really likes to exploit. Uh -huh. uh, and really what he just loves to do is exploit. He literally plays very close to, a, like, Street Fighter frame trap style. Because all it is is he's got, like, double lockdown assists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he just tries to press and press and press because he doesn't really have a high-low game with the characters that he plays mm -hmm. of uh, Virgil, Frank, Strange. So he just tries to press and press and press until you push a button at the wrong time and then he gets a hit. He's got throws, too. Though. He, he does have throws, 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 yeah. And he's got some interesting ways to convert off like the Eye of Agamotto assist and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, you know, his composure doesn't always seal it out, but he plays pretty high relative, relatively consistently. Okay. Uh, and I think, he can, I think he could probably pull it out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some faith into him. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So, um, with that, uh, are there any other remarks you'd like to make before we close out this show? Uh, beep boop bop, chest broke tear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, no I hope I wasn't too much of a windbag. No, I think, uh, hopefully, uh, I'm sure all of our viewers will really enjoy looking back, and particularly the Daigo thing. That I hope. Be very fascinating. Yeah. So, um, yeah, with that, we'll go ahead and close out uh, episode two of the Spiral Series Highlight Reel. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. And uh, if you have any questions or concerns or feedback you'd like to give us on the format of the show or what, what kind of stuff you'd like to see, uh, let us know. And uh, we'll be back in two weeks to cover the next Rambat, as well as all kinds of Danger Room stuff. Mm -hmm. right. so, thanks again.
listening to Theron.